Hey you guys, I thought while I had a little bit of time on my hands, I would um, get busy on our part two of our series of supernatural videos and um, I thought today we might cover some of the types of ghosts and spirits and entities and you know things of that nature but um, before we start as always, I'm going to light an incense so we can clear our space. And not trying to sound like a broken record, but, you know, anytime you're doing spell work, teaching, learning, just, you know, talking, everyday life, you know, always cleanse your space. So that's what we're going to do now. And I've also got a bottle of intention spray, and um, I'm going to give it a few squirts and let that be a added bonus. And um, as always, I've got a few stones next to uh, me, and um, I'm not going to get into... A long drawn out discussion on the stones which you guys know I could because I really love stones and the properties and things like that but that's not why we're here today and I really have a lot to discuss there's no way I could finish it up today I know that and I may not even be able to finish up what I wanted to discuss today so I'm gonna try so I'm gonna try to stay on track but um, I definitely wanted to clear our space. That's a must in everything that you do, your spiritual life, your physical life, you know. Always clear your space, cleanse your area. It's just so important and it only takes a few moments. And if your intention is there and that's what you aim to do is to clear your area of negativity then it'll be cleared you know negative you know negativity is just it's always there and it's just waiting you know so always cleanse your space and get rid of all those bad vibes and um I've got my little bowl here and I've got a few little herbs that I went out and picked maybe a week or so ago. I've had them long enough for them to dry out really good, but um, I've got a piece of moonstone, and it's a raw piece. It's really nothing all that pretty to look at, but it's got a great, you know, energy to it, and um. You know, the good thing about stones, you know, you can use them for so many different things. And one of my favorite properties or energies that Moonstone carries is, um, you know, of course, you know, it's it's got a uh, essence of the moon to it, you know, goddess Luna, but it's also got a goddess aspect to it and a lot of times when I work with moonstone it's simply because of that goddess aspect and you know anytime you're doing any type of spell work or spiritual work or you know why wouldn't you want goddess energy around you you know but um we've got our moonstone and I've got just a little small piece of rose quartz and um I've been big on rose quartz lately it's a stone of love and um not only love of others but love of self and you know you've got to love yourself before you can love anyone else so rose quartz you know and not only that the main reason I grabbed it today is because I'm doing what I love. I love sharing, you know, my knowledge. I love learning. 
you know, anything that is of my craft, you know, anything that is of my path, you know, I just, I love my craft. And I figured, you know, rose quartz is the perfect stone of love. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing what I love. So I grabbed the rose quartz and um, I've got my most favorite stone in the whole wide world and it's my twin flying clear quartz point and um i have it because of a personal reason but it has a lot of good properties as well and um you know not just to find your twin flying to keep your twin flying but you know, it's quartz, and quartz is a stone of clarity. It amplifies any other stone that you're working with. It, um, I lost my train of thought. I was looking at my stone. <laughs> but, um, it's a stone of knowledge. It helps you to see things clearly in order to learn. It helps you embrace things spiritually and, um, I really truly included it today for its uh, amplifying property because I thought, you know, along with my other stones, you know, it would enhance their properties. But like I said, each and every stone has so many properties. And, you know, it doesn't matter what a book says. It doesn't matter what someone tells you. You know, when you do your spell work, when you do you know, any type of, you know, spiritual work or, you know, whatever it is you're doing, teaching, learning, you know, you follow your heart because intention is key and you can work with any type of stone and put your intention into it, you know, and, you know, before you start working with the crystal or stone, you're going to program it anyway. So, you know, it's going to be yours. It's going to have your energy and it's going to know your heart. So you don't always have to go by what a book tells you that particular stone is for. Whatever you feel in your heart, that is what that particular stone is for. And like I've said before, you know, you can pick a, a just a rock up out the yard and place your intention in it. And, you know, it's just as powerful we're going to move along, and um, I do have one other stone, and um, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's clear quartz point as well, but I made it into this bullet casing, and um, I made it originally as a charm for a necklace, but the more I worked with it, I tend to use it when I'm doing, you know, any type of protective magic and for me you know it's the clear quartz point and you know it has that point and that point helps you to direct that energy you know that you're working with but for me it symbolizes the bullet you know the bullet casing and, and this would be from a gun that I own and of course my gun is merely for protection so this little pendant that I made, when I do any type of protective spell work, I tend to grab it and I use it. And it may be small and it may be little, but I know what it's capable of. And size does not matter when it comes to stones. But, um, you know, I, I use it kind of like a wand because, you know, anything with a point, you can direct the energy, you know, just like a wand. But... I thought with the topic that we're discussing today, I would include it, you know, for that protective quality. And this is just an intention spray that I made. It's got some clary sage. It's got a little bit of peppermint and a little bit of lavender. And then it's got some more clear quartz points and some smoky quartz points in it as well. So it's super duper protect protective spray. That's a mouthful to say, isn't it? And I'm just going to spray a little around. And like I said, you know, with these sprays, when you make them, 
when you make something with your own two hands and your own intention from the heart, that's the best, you know, the most powerful. And not only that, you're saving money and, you know, you can make it and, you know, everyone likes something different. So, you know, you can adjust it to the smell, the fragrance that you like. But um, I would like to uh, take a very quick moment and I want to give gratitude to the goddess. I just feel the need to do it and I always try to do what I'm called to do. So that's what I'm going to do now. And um, I just want to, you know, tell my goddess, you know, that I humble myself before you and I offer you my gratitude for all that you have blessed me with, physical, spiritual gifts. I'm just forever grateful. And I offer you my gratitude in perfect love and with much, much gratitude. And so it shall be. And I just felt the need. So I think that when the goddess calls us to do something and it's within our means and we can do it, we should do it. And if our heart is leading us to do something, I think we should follow our heart because, you know, that's an important key in magic as well. But let's move it along. Um, I wanted to talk today about the types of ghosts and spirits and entities. And there's so many kind and there's probably dozens I've never even heard of and um I'm just gonna mention a few that I know of and then a few more that I learned of recently and like I said we may not finish it up today I know we're not gonna finish our series up today but we may not even finish this discussion up today because with so many different topics that are <clears throat> related to spell work and witchcraft and paganism and you know spirituality you know there's just so much that can be said about it and you know I'm only offering you know what I know what I've come to realize what I've been taught and you know what I have to offer is just a very very small piece of the pie so if I miss something, I apologize. But as always, you know, please share with us. And, you know, anything you want to add, please add it in the comments. And I will get back to you on it. But um, moving along, because I can't stay on track. <laughs> um, the first type of ghost I want to talk about is poltergeist. And I'm sure that's probably one of the most well-known types. It's a noisy ghost. It is uh, one, um, I guess you would say, like a, a playful spirit. Um, they usually start out kind of mild, just making a mess, you know, making noises, just nuisance. But as time goes on, you know, they're energy will become stronger and their presence will become more known to you or you know whoever is in the house or building or wherever it is that you know they're doing their damage and you know over time they'll become more and more intense you know and they can even become dangerous and I think that is a big big mistake people make is that when they think of poltergeist, they think of something, you know, playful. They think of it more as a nuisance. And that is what most of them are. And that is what most of them start out as. But with all types of, you know, supernatural forces and energies, you know, the longer they're around and the more interaction they have with people, you know, the it's your life force, you know, they're, they're drawing off of your life force and they're gaining strength and energy. That's why a lot of times whenever you come in contact with the ghost or a spirit or, 
you know, it doesn't have to be that you see one, you can just hear one or you can feel one. There's just different types and different ways they go about making their self known. But usually after you come in contact with a spirit, you will feel drained, you know, you'll just feel depleted. And that's why, because they're, you know, they're drawing off of your life force. They need your life force, you know, because they've got to have your energy to actually move things and to make noises. And, you know, you've got to think about it. They're no longer alive and some of them have never been alive. So, you know, life force is, you know, one of the strongest energies and that's what lower vibrational, you know, ghosts, spirits, entities, whatever you want to call them, anything that has lower vibrations, that's what they're drawn to. That's what they're in need of. That is what they're longing for is the energy from a life force. Um, another one is a uh, an interactive spirit. And um, I think it's probably the most common type of a uh, spirit. Um, it's usually a loved one or someone you knew, you know, when they were alive. Um, they can come to you and just physically show themselves to you. Or it could just be that you smell a scent. Like, for me, I sometimes smell my grandma's perfume. She wore a particular perfume, which was candid and it's by a company called Avon, and that was her favorite perfume. In fact, I think that's the only perfume I ever known her to wear, and still to this day sometimes I will smell that. I won't see her, I won't hear her, but I will smell that perfume, and sometimes it may just be a light little whiff I catch, and then sometimes it'll be a strong, strong aroma that's you know, it's everywhere in the house. I can smell it on myself. I can smell it in the air. And when I do, I know that she's there. She's near. And that is what an interactive spirit does. You know, they want you to know that they're there. They, you know, they might make a noise. They might show their self. They may, you know, a a perfume, a cologne, a food, something that was, you know, a major thing to them when they were alive. If that thing actually has a smell, they will, you know, they will make you able to smell that. Um, they can make noises. They can even speak to you. And the thing about interactive spirits is they look just like they looked when they were alive. When they speak to you, they'll sound like they sounded when they were alive. Um, and usually if they are making contact with you, it's because they are trying to tell you something. They may be wanting to help you with something. Or maybe they just want to check in with you, you know, like with my grandmother. I think she just wants to check in with me because we were very, very close. She raised me, and I think she just wants me to know that she's still here and she's still watching over me, you know, because even in death, I think, you know, the energy of love is still, it's known. It may be a different form of love and a different type of energy because, you know, you have to be alive to have high vibrations, but I think you know, you remember things from the time when you were alive. And if you loved someone when you were alive, you're going to remember that. And you'll probably even experience that love, but it's just a different form because you're in a different realm and, you know, you're of a different, you know, energy field. But, um, Another one is orbs, and I think orbs are very common. I've seen orbs before, and, um, you know, orbs are balls of light that show up. They'll show up on pictures, and yes, I have cheat notes. <laughs> um, they'll show up on pictures, and I think they're usually blue or white, but I have seen red ones. I have seen green ones. Um, 
they can be other colors and I know that for fact because I've seen them but I think usually the majority of the time they are blue or they are white um they're actually what I believe are the souls of people that have passed and I guess it depends on what your belief system and your religion is but um you know, pets, I think pets have, I think they have souls or maybe something like a soul. It, I know it can't exactly be the same as us because we're not animals, we're people. But I think it's something similar. So it may not be a soul, but I think animals have something similar to a soul. And I, I do know that when you see an orb, it's because it's a an animal or a person it's it's something that had like a soul or had that type of energy or that type of aura or you know for lack of a better word I know a paranormal specialist or investigator I'm just sharing some things that I know and that I've learned with you but orbs you know whether it's a person or animal I I do know that if you see an orb, you'll see them mostly, you will see them with your naked eye, but you'll mostly see them, you know, with cameras, on film, on video, you know, for some reason their energy shows up on electrical devices, you know, um, and I do know that um, the longer an orb lingers, you know, each time that you see it, the more often you see that particular same orb and the the longer that particular orb lingers it gathers more and more energy and the longer it lingers it's able to transform into a full body apparition and you know as far as what it may look like it varies from you know the person it was or the animal it was it it varies and you know energies uh, the place that the occurrence happens it has a lot to do with it you know a lot of things you know factor in so the orb may look like a giant orb the orb may look like a it may look like light but it may have the shape of a, a human or it may have the shape of the animal or it may have a totally different shape it just it depends and um another one is funnel ghost um these are vi visiting spirits and they're usually seen in your home um i do know these types are the ones that cause the cold spots like when you're moving around and you know the room is set at one stable temperature but you hit one little area and it's just a cold spot there well that's probably a funnel ghost and um and the reason they're called funnel ghosts is if you see it it looks like a funnel it looks like a swirling funnel um and they're also caught on film. I do know that much about them. I don't have a lot of experience with them, but I do know that much about them. You can catch them on film or video. Um, ectoplasma. Um, it can be a mist. Uh, it can be a like a, a cloud looking type figure. It's usually a type of ghost and it's a floating type of you know spiritual body uh you'll see it floating above ground um usually um they move pretty fast i know that and um they can stay in one spot and they will appear to go through walls and go through doors or just go through closed windows. I do know that much about them. Um, another one is uh, a demon-possessed human. Well, it's actually a human, as you would guess, but they are possessed by a demonic entity. And um, 
it's it's nothing more than an evil spirit and it enters a person and when it enters them it controls them it controls their conscious energy it can cause them to say things and it can cause them to do things it can make their body move um it's a very very strong force and um it's a very dangerous force it can harm the person it can harm other people it can even kill people and including the person that's possessed um another one is a demon that's just a supernatural being and um it can attach to objects uh i guess like the movie annabelle things like that when you see the demon entity that attached to that baby doll well that's what the supernatural being of a demon is they attach to objects they can morph into any shape they can show their true presence um they usually if you see their true presence it's usually just a black mass um and they're they're very powerful as well and their main objective is usually to cause harm or death so i don't suggest if you want to go out ghost hunting or you're curious i don't you know i don't suggest you mess with that type of presence especially if you're not experienced um another one shadow people and I've had a little experience with shadow people. Um, these are the the things you see out the corner of your eyes. And I think a lot of people have had experience with these. Um, you know, usually you see them out the corner of your eye. And as soon as you look, they're gone. And um, if you do see one face to face, they're usually like a hooded figure um, or a black silhouette. And, you know, if you are able to get close enough to look into their face, all you're probably going to see is a black void, you know, a dark void. Um, and they can fade into walls. They can fade into windows, TVs. They can just fade into the darkness. And I experienced this when I first opened my third eye. I would experience sleep paralysis is how it would start. And I think I would be lucid dreaming because I would be awake, but I would be asleep and I would I would get that par paralyzed feeling come over me. And to me, you know, it was terrifying because I couldn't control my body. I couldn't move my body. And I seen that. And when I was finally able to move, I seen the shadow person and they just they faded out my window my bedroom window right there beside me they just faded out and um I'm wanting to talk more but I'm I'm getting close to the end of my uh my storage on my camera so I guess I'm gonna cut it short and possibly I'll finish up the types of ghosts tomorrow I'm sorry guys but it is what it is, and I hope I said something that you resonated with, something that you, you know, know something of and you can share with us, drop a comment. Maybe I said something that you didn't know. Maybe you learned something, but if anything at all I said, you know, you resonated with, you like it, you know, like and subscribe, and please, please come back for the follow-up to the types of ghosts, and then we'll move on to our part three, and as always, intention is key to manifesting any of your needs and desires, and remember, if you believe, then you will receive, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.